Did you grow up listening to opera music? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's yeah. what I thought when I heard. <laughs> yeah, I actually got into the classical music very late in the game when I was in my second year in high school. And I just fell in love with it. It's not too late in the game. Oh, you yeah. Know, for the classical world, you got to breathe, eat, and sleep it in the womb. Uh, like, they train the babies from two. It's kind of like them classes. soccer players. I think they start when they're oh, six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and on the cultural side, what culture are you bringing to the sound? Well, you know, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing a lot of spice, a lot of truth, and rhythm, and feeling. You know, that's a lot of this music now that's out is losing its feeling mm -hmm. to the soul. So... So why, why, okay, so why opera? And, and this is why I'm saying, like, it's not, like, the most popular mm -hmm. form of music. It's not something, we all know it. Everyone has, like, oh, we get it, Pavarotti. But mm -hmm. that's it. Like, that's the extent of opera. Bocelli, as as bro. Bocelli. Okay, Bocelli. <laughs> and then Cherise Mills? <laughs> well, why do something that everyone's doing? You know what I mean? I want to be original. I want to be different. So I decided to do something that will make me stand out. And it's something that I actually love and was God-given. Like one day he just said, Bing! and, you know, I fell in love with it. And you just fell. And so, okay, what, what's your favorite opera song? Mm, La Shakyopianga. Oh, I have no idea what that. And here's can, the way can you say that again slowly so I could <laughs> let it marinate, please? La Shakyopianga. Yes. It just sounds good. The way she says it, too. Or it sounds like a, a, a dish at a Chinese restaurant. Like, I don't no, know. Like a French restaurant. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Ormida di pietata con la forza de viso rompimi al carocel di mie contenti e qui quando l'eterno viva mi tieni in tormentar su inferno Señor oh per pietà lasciami piangere and that's just the intro and, whoa and that's, that's the it. best spaghetti ever that, we were both that, wrong look, we I, were both I just wrong. want to announce my retirement I had just realized <laughs> I will never reach that level of talent Swoon. so I now am retiring from the show thank you very much for having me <laughs> because you're the star now but Ron, is, it, been is nice. it talent or is it hard work it's very much hard work because you have to realize your instruments on you daily you can't put it down so everything you do is about maintaining mm -hmm. and keeping it it's not i can't go smoking some one day and then wake up the next day and i can do this i have to keep it in tune so i drink lots of tea i vocalize almost every day i do warm-ups you see julie andrews lost her vocal cords why do you think because wow. she wasn't keeping up you just because you're the best doesn't mean you can't stop you got to stop working you have to keep working and that's the beauty of classical music because there's so much discipline involved mm. so obviously you're very committed ambitious has there been a time where you may be overworked and it hurt your vocal cords absolutely absolutely that's that's the thing that a lot of people fear in the classical world when you mix pop and opera together because you lose track of your training you there's you you dot your eyes and cross your t's and everything is so perfect but with pop, hip-hop, R&B, you, you got slangs, you, you, you got to be raspy, and that does mess up your vocal cords if you don't take care of it. And that is the major key, taking care of your vocal cords. Well, okay. I'm sure people have obviously gravitated towards you and your sound. You're doing, obviously, you're doing these numbers, these concerts, and, and people, people are really really liking what you're doing. How did people in the opera world, where it seems like a bit elitist, mm -hmm. it seems like they can be, and especially just being black, being from Trinidad, uh, being a, 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 a woman, being a woman who's not like a, a, a big woman, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, a good looking woman, all these things, and then adding that spice of pop and hip hop to it. How did that, how did that play? How did they perceive that? Sure. Well, I will say before I even did that, it was hard for me because of those things you said, I didn't look like what the society brings to that world. So a lot of times I would book a role, fly to Europe, and then they'll change my role based on how I looked. Wow. Not based on what they heard on my audition tapes. Mm. 
So that's another reason why I got tired of just doing only classical music. I had to make my own lane, you know? I didn't look like it, so okay, I'm gonna give you what I look like and what I sound like. So yes, it's, it's hard. They don't look at it in a good way. They, they're, you know, it's a very snooty society, but I still love them and I'm gonna give them what I have. And it's, it's to each his own. I can't expect you to like one thing that he may like, you know, and that's the crazy thing about music right now. People are copycats, supposed to truly just liking what they really like, not what the society likes. Mm -hmm. What really moves you? What really makes you say, oh, I love that song? Not because, oh, you love it, so I got to love it too, you know? What I like is you're bringing that sense of individuality. Mm-hmm. back to the culture and and it gets lost in the mainstream sometimes mm-hmm. so you now doing a hybrid of genres my next question was do you still work independently so do you sing only opera i know you've had those experiences so do you now that you've defined your own genre are you still going for that style of singing is it hard to basically move backwards now that you have a hybrid into the individual genres music is universal so mm-hmm. it's not hard you know, I'm doing this independently, so that w- that's where I get creative control. Mm-hmm. It's not like I have to follow what a label is telling me to, what to Ooh. do. And that's the beauty of our social media hmm. right now. We can put ourselves out there and touch so many people that we couldn't have ever touched before unless you had a label to put you out there. I can be independent and do a distribution deal now. So the labels were just to get connect those dots all around the world that... I couldn't have done before. Now you have YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Live Me, you name it, to where so, I can reach those people and those masses. You so, know? So when you're on stage and you look in the crowd, is the audience like old school opera heads and then teeny boppers pop? What what does your crowd look like? It is such a mixture of people. And that's what I love about music. Music brings us together. You know, mm-hmm. just like you would want whenever something bad happens or or it brings people together you got to find something that brings those memories and those feelings and music is one of them you know and i i love being able to have 10 year olds love my music 30 year olds love my music and even 70 year olds because when you mix records that were built from like the 1960s and the 16th centuries that's operas were were from the gregorian chants Mm -hmm. so before our time so i have such a wide base of fans to where now I'm if you notice I'm very particular about I don't show my ass too much even though I got it I'm, I'm real because I I want to be a good role model for all ages that are following me and you know I so, try to stick true to that so who do you date opera dudes or or, <laughs> oh. or rap dudes oh. like who, oh. who are we okay so first of all i don't talk about my love life that's very private mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter you know i i love all kinds of music so whether you like opera or pop or anything it's okay well wow. very private so the either or may not go over so well today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so either or is this, we play a game to get to know you better where we, uh-huh. we ask you either or uh-huh. and, and we basically analyze the options that you chose. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so listen, we can still play it. Oh, no, we are. So, uh-huh. so, so we, <laughs> we expect the answers to be uh-huh. either or, nothing in between. We encourage okay. you to select one. You don't have to, but we okay. kindly encourage you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first either or. I'm oh, we're going right you. into I'm it, huh? Going right yeah. into it. Okay, we're going, I'm right, going into right into it. it. I need to know if you prefer Italian food or Jamaican food. Is it either or, I have to say? Yep. You have to pick one or the other. The word either or or. No, no, no. Oh, oh Jamaican. Pick, pick. Jamaican. First of all, you know I'm Trini. Why, could you, why would that even not be an option? Mm-hmm. You know? It's the flavor. I like spices. I like seasoning, like real good seasonings. We marinate our meats, you know? Mm-hmm. Not most cultures don't marinate their meats. Nothing against Italian food because I love Italian food too. But if I had to choose, it would be Jamaican. My analysis... Now, you like the spice because you're Trini, mm-hmm. but you are you like what you like, but you're also open to other ideas. Jamaican food, it might be slightly different, mm-hmm. but you still accept it. You got an open mind. You're not vibing with the Italian food because, quite honestly, them noodles, them carbs, they're going to throw you off your chi on stage. You can't OD on that. You care about 
your fitness, you care about your health and your presence, and taking care of your instruments. Mm. Therefore, you don't OD on the noodles and the cheese. That's my analysis. Interesting. <laughs> I just took it as you're a, a, a down to earth, humble person who, no matter what, will never forget your roots. And even though you have this luxurious look and luxurious lifestyle, you're you're really just a, a down ass chick <laughs> at the, the real very root of it. And that's just who you are and who you will be, and you don't make excuses for it. Thank you. Yeah, Those both were great. No, both great. Usually, Tehran's only right, so I'm happy to know that I'm right as well. <laughs> hey. um, uh, uh, okay. Uggs? Oh. Or flip-flops? Oh, snap. Uggs. Do you want to elaborate on that? Nah, I'm going I'm to see where y'all go with <laughs> this. Let I'm not me? giving you oh. any reasons why. Right. What do you think, George? What I think is that you're not fooled by illusion. You have a grip on reality. Mm. And you understand it's a cold world. <laughs> it's a cold world out there. Bundle up, DJ Cal. No. Nah. So what you're basically telling us is, although you're in L.A. right now, and you see this scene that... What's real isn't really real out here. Yo, you're East Coast to the core. So it ain't going to be some Tims. It's going to be some Uggs. Because these flip-flops in this fantasy land are going to flip-flop off the charts. And the Uggs going to stay on. Because you got to remind yourself. It's up to you, not the weather, to keep yourself warm. Because warmth comes from within. Yeah, I think you're sponsored by Uggs. Like, there's no other reason to really choose Uggs. Like, what, you got to be at the beach wearing Uggs? Like... Bruh, like, what, what are you talking about right now? Like, Well, actually, I'm sponsored by Emmett Shoes right now. The world is technology. Y'all see these light-up shoes right no. here? Okay, so when she walked in, right, I thought <laughs> that that was just like this exclusive color in the crayon box I had never seen before. I was like, that's shiny. How is it so shiny? And then 15 minutes later, I'm like, wait a second. Nah, look, are, and they are those actually, lighting up? Look, are those male and, and female or just? Male and female. Oh, and, and it's snap. called Emmett Shoes? Yeah. Emmett, well, Emmett Clothing is the brand, mm. and they, they just came out with these. They're not released yet. They come out to the market in February. Here's oh, what I don't understand. How does she keep everything so clean? The Gucci shirt is so white and clean. The jacket is <laughs> so white and clean. The shoes is like, yo, just just came in here fresh, man. Oh, thank you. You know, I got to keep up. Keep up with the, with the crowd, you know? All right. All right. So while you're keeping up with the crowd. Which, you, which one do I prefer? Do you prefer laundry mats or dry cleaners? Do you like to wash yourself or have someone else do it? Hmm. Dry cleaners. Dry cleaner. Is there a reason or you want me to again? Uh, that's the bougie side of me. The bougie side. <laughs> okay. my, my analysis is, okay, you, you know when it's... Because, look, we can't live our lives without a simple ounce of trust, Okay. So you know when it's appropriate to trust others. You don't just hand out that trust to just anyone. But when it comes to the dry cleaners, you're giving them your prized possessions, your wardrobe, because you do know when, as an artist in your own career who's not signed to a label and doing it herself, mm. you know when it's necessary to relinquish, okay? But you're mostly in charge. But when it is necessary to relinquish, you, through your growth and development of an artist, have known when to do that, and that's at the dry cleaners. Interesting, interesting. Mm. I just think, ain't nobody got time for that. Who want to wash their own clothes? Like, <laughs> nobody wants to do laundry. Anyone who wants to do laundry is a serial killer, first of all, right? So dry cleaning is easy, especially if you know you can do it, if you got it, flaunt it. And on top of that, you're bougie, and I think you're busy. So when you combine those, mm. it's like... Here you go. Oh, he just gave me an idea. I'm going to make a shirt that says bougie and busy. Yeah, <laughs> here you go. Busy. And you know what? I'm going to agree with Tehran's analysis. That's Amigos first. And to build off his analysis, I haven't done laundry mm. in four months. Um. So do you have clean clothes at so your house? So I, I have a lot of shirts, <laughs> jeans, and jackets that are hanging. I have a lot of that. Okay. So when it comes to socks, boxers, all right, and towels, I go to Ross. And you just buy new and ones. And I just buy new ones. You know, th yeah. that's a, th a guy thing. It really is. Yeah, that's what I... And I, when I, I have a friend that does that that just buys new shirts and socks and underwear every time. I'm like, you don't wash? Like, it's just way easier. And when I want a new jacket, 
What I do is I steal it from Toronto. Look at my jacket, yo. Oh, he'd be taking My you. jacket right now looks amazing. I actually <laughs> physically stole this from... I didn't steal it from Tehran. He ordered it online. You know, oh. you know when you order online, the sizes are never true to size when it's coming in from Europe. Okay. So it came in, me being the bigger dude. It was you know too big for him, so you took it. It fit me more. He didn't want to go through <laughs> the trouble of returning it. Uh-uh. All right? So I got, I got one more either or for you. Okay. okay. The Gucci shades or the Prada shades? Mm. That's a tough one, y'all. That is a tough one, but I will have to say Gucci because they did step their game up. Gucci. All mm-hmm. right. My analysis of that is, although you have only known me for 10 minutes or something like that, you think that I'm going to be a friend in your life. And my name starts with a G. <laughs> and Gucci starts with a G. So you're about that Gucci now. I reaffirmed your own beliefs in Gucci. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm Team Ray Ban, so I'm not quite on your level, but um, you know, I've never been a big fan of Prada. Maybe when I'm older, I feel like that's more of an older brand, like for more sophisticated older people, like at past like forty and fifty. I is it just me? That. I received that. I received you know, that. Their that's stuff true. is very like very plain and not plain plain in a sense where it's just. There's not much patterns and prints mm-hmm. and you know nothing. F- flashy and glitz and glam and i'm as you can see i love anything that glitz and glam yeah just shining phone case shining you know gucci gucci has diamond out shades they Uh have you know shoes that have studs on them too so that's why i chose they're more hip all right i'll take Mm -hmm. your analysis and just one question i had out of curiosity do you Mm -hmm. remember the first gucci item you ever bought Mm -hmm. first time in the gucci store yes the first gucci item was like the you know, they had the soft uh, fabric Gucci print. Yeah, you know? yeah, I know what you're talking and about. And it was one of yeah, one of the little bags, a yeah. smaller size. Yeah, I mm-hmm. never owned that bag. I never bought it for a girlfriend, but I saw somebody have it in the mall. I said, "Can I touch that purse? Because that looks like it's soft." And that's mm-hmm. how I know. Mm-hmm. You know <laughs> All right. So you've done well with the either or. You've survived. I hope we haven't unveiled too much of your personal life. Right? You're no, cooling right now. You're good. You're good. All right. Every week, all right, Mm -hmm. we ask our female expert guests if they have a crush. And this week's crush is gangster rapper. Is there a gangster rapper out there who who you would go on a date on? You know, I'm not a fan of the gangsters. You're not a fan of the gangster (laughs) rapper? Uh -uh. There's not even not a single gangster rapper? No, because I feel like... Nas? No. J. Cole? No. They're not gangster rappers. I mean, Nas gangster. and J. Cole, really, that's the two most gangster person you could thought Nas of. Nas was in Belly. Uh, but Nas I, yeah, does gangster. positive gang- yeah, rappers. Yeah, he was well, more I didn't conscious. Say, it didn't have most to be like... gangster rappers talk about drugs, sex, but money. But I mean, they're still like, gangsters. Do you that's find, gangster. Do you at least Wu-Tang? 50 Cent, is he attractive? No. Not attractive. Mm-mm. What about... Uh, uh, but he's a great artist. He is a good artist. Dej Loaf? No. Are you stretching now? No. You stretching no. now? No. no. What about gangster? Future? No. Mm-mm. He got too many babies. Uh, <laughs> oh, Future has... He does. Yeah, like does. way too many babies. Yeah. Like, We're actually going to talk about him. Later. What about Young Thug when he's not wearing a dress? Um, Really? No. In the dress? <laughs> Mm-mm. Oh. Mm-mm. This is tough. No. Now, if you said R&B singers, maybe. You see, I'm like, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Huh. You know? So who's the R&B singer crush? Hmm. Brian McKnight. Oh wait, that's mine. My fault. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's talk about that. Maybe someone I would want to collab with too would be mm. maybe Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Chris mm-hmm. Brown. That's gangster. He's more gangster than half the rappers. <laughs> yeah, I just he made. really is. Though. <laughs> Shout out to Breezy. Uh huh. <laughs> Shout out to Breezy. Yeah. So why Chris Brown? Um. Because he's good looking and he still makes great music and he's dedicated. And I feel like that would be a good look. What about his looks do you like and what about his talent do you like the most? Mm, He can move like he's a really good dancer, you know, and he is, like I said, dedicated to his craft. So I feel like it's a win win situation. If he's that dedicated to that, maybe he'll be dedicated to his lady, too. Okay, Hmm. well, that's deep. (laughs) And what about the looks? Oh, he's uh, handsome. Didn't Come he on now. have a bad experience with a girl from Trinidad, though? <laughs> like, did that not We're work not going to go there, okay? Can, oh. we, have, can we get through uh, crazy? You first know, of all, she was from Barbados, not Trinidad. It's oh, a okay, whole okay. other thing. But 
Clearly, he likes spice. Oh, yeah, he does like spice. And you know what? We're gonna get through mentioning Chris Brown without saying something negative. I think he's an amazing artist, isn't he? Next topic. Hold on, but I don't know if we can do that. And and, and the reason I say that is because we can't forget when someone did something bad. We can't just like gloss over it because they're talented. I understand, but right now we're talking about his talents. Sure, and then we should still bring this up. Like, mm. I, Why I mean, do we mm. always have to bring it up? He was, you know, when he went through this stuff. Because that's just, that's the shame of what you should bear upon yourself when you do something. I think shameful. I think he's been through enough with that, and he's asked for forgiveness. He's showed himself, so there's no need to bring it back up mm. multiple times. Mm-hmm. Trust, oh. me, I, trust me, nobody. I, does, just because, Majority rule. Hold on, just because <laughs> just because everyone thinks something's right doesn't make it right, and just because no one sees something's wrong doesn't mean True. it's not wrong. So you have being an like, opinion. Oh, the, the, the majority people think this. They also there was a time where majority people thought slavery was okay. Still didn't make it okay. Now I didn't mean to leave you out of the majority. And if you want a hug, you could have a hug. I don't. I don't want a hug. I'm not saying that. I'm not speaking on his actions, whether right or wrong. I'm just saying when you're speaking about someone's talent. So you know, no one here is really right or wrong. But when we're speaking about someone's talent, it's okay to keep it on the topic and talk about their talent. And then, and Sheree, as a as a woman, you were saying like. He's asked for forgiveness, Mm -hmm. so we should forgive him? No, listen, he asks the right people who need to be forgiven to forgive him. It's your choice or not to, you know, but he has apologized. He has owned up to his, what he has done, you know, and he has admitted his wrongs. All you can do is grow and move forward. What else can you do? So in relationships, should we be able to forgive people and move on? In a- general. Absolutely. Because you know why? Who, who else is going to be hurting but yourself? If you holding on to things, the only person that's going to be having that grudge is you. While the next person has moved on. You just inspired my words of the week. This is Mr. GK, and these are my words of the week. Don't stress the X. Don't stress don't the X? Don't stress the X. <laughs> just don't do it. Just okay. don't stress the X. You know who I think is really talented? Who? Trey Songs. Oh yeah, I think Trey Songs is one of the most talented, amazing really? people. He's yeah. just a great guy. Well, I disagree. Like, Ooh. no, I think his talent speaks for itself. Oh, we his should... talent to text your girlfriend. I, I, I'm so sorry. We're talking about talent right now. Oh yeah, a talent to text someone's girlfriend. Trey he Songs tried to Greg's, steal. He texts Greg's girlfriend. Is that why you don't like him? Try to steal. And that was inappropriate. Try to steal someone's girlfriend. We know this guy Greg. We know uh, Greg. Greg. Greg's Greg. Greg. Corey. <laughs> Greg. Carrie, you're not gonna no, it's, it's oh, you know who else Greg is Carrie. talented? Jeremiah. Jeremiah's talented too. Yeah, but Jeremiah's never tried to hit on any of uh, our girls, so we're not Greg's really girls. Yeah, <laughs> Greg's not girls. Sometimes Greg's you say Ark is Greg's part of the team. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah actually right. doesn't get his just dues. He's no. an extremely talented artist. Very. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, a, he's a hit song maker. Man. Hit song maker. And nobody, nobody really recognizes how great they are mm-hmm. at what they do. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, he, I don't know why, and he's good looking. He's got all the makings, and he's just never uh, reached just that felt accolade. Like when he broke up with Jordan, it hurt me, man. It hurt me, it hurt oh, me here. Yeah, and I, and I need to remove that bias because he's a great artist. Yeah, he mm-hmm. is a great. artist. I need to remove that bias. You know what I'm saying? Popping or stopping yeah. trends, men do, and you need to let us know if it's popping. Should we continue it or stop? And should we stop the trend? And this week, the trend is. Emojis, like you know, when guys send emojis when they text you, like is that something that's popping or? Oh, I need to know that. Or stop. I'm an emoji. Yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh, stopping. What? I'm gonna tell you why. Because yes, an please. emoji is a, a scapegoat to actually say how you feel. Hmm. It's just, and it's it can be taken in so many ways. Words are powerful. Hmm. An emoji hmm. isn't. You know. I'm a literature major, and I'm using too many emojis, and I need to be stopping. I want to thank you for sharing this message <laughs> Especially to me when you send emojis to other guys, there. bro. Ooh, wait I a was minute. I just expressing myself. I just need you to. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry about he that. Just, my, listen, my he phone. was so serious. The I phone fell. I was serious. I slammed the table, and the phone fell. <laughs> I'm going to drop the emojis. Yo, right? one time, George sent me so many emojis. A girl next to me was like, who is that? And, uh, and I had to lie and say it was another girl. Because it was Cause easier it to explain. So, are you serious? That it was another girl than that it was George. Because at that point, it just sounds like a lie. Like, oh, it's George. I'd be like, no. 
Okay, it's not my fault. I was visiting the zoo and I wanted to tell you all of the animals I saw. I didn't want to spell all of their names, so I sent you different animals. You really sent monkey, pig, all those emojis? Yeah, I wanted him to <laughs> see Noah's Ark at the zoo. He sent me a zebra. The zebra was popping. That's right, just the zebra's popping. I felt Come like on. that was racist. Can you, can you tell me that the zebra is a popping well, well, emoji? Well, I will say maybe he can never use those emojis on a regular, so he no, got he excited used, he to use them it. on a regular. Yo. <laughs> He so wait a minute. So you use giraffe on a regular? So how do you? What do you say exactly? It says hi and get it because a giraffe's high because it's tall. <laughs> like for one, I see. I have some girlfriends that get ghosted. They call them ghosting someone. That's a whole new term now where they don't even text back or call, and then out of the blue they'll say, "Hey, like why play games? We are not in high school anymore. There's no need to play games with people's feelings. I don't believe in that. That's a that's a ghosting." Uh, it has become like a thing. Ghosting. And people yeah. like that. They feel like it some- empowers them. You know what I mean? Like, really? No, you're just stupid. It's disrespectful. Yeah. Very. Ghosting someone is disrespectful. Ghost, yeah. You ever been ghosted, Sharice? Um, I could never imagine someone ghosting you. I think they tried. I had someone try to ghost me because they knew they weren't my type. Mm. So, you know, after I, I was just like, oh, no, you know, we're just friends. But what you doing tomorrow? Let's hang out. Like, okay, cool. And then we make plans, and then the day goes, and then we just go. They don't text back. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. Now you, you butt hurt. But, yo, you friend zone. If, if, I think if you friend zone somebody, then they're allowed to ghost you. I don't. No. I, I think that's disrespectful because then you're saying my only intent is this, and if this doesn't exist, then, then it's over. over. That's so crazy. Then, you know what? Then you don't deserve a relationship because you didn't want to be my friend in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's just something so hurtful about being friend zoned. Yeah, but that just means you, you know, can't take because, rejection. Because just hear the other side of it. I respect what you said, but if somebody's like saying you're friend zoned in in a way, they're also the same way you're saying, "Oh, I don't want to be your friend." They're also saying you're not worthy to date me. That's how it feels. No, it's not that That's you're not it worthy. Feels. It's just you're not my type, or you know, I don't see any future with you, so it's not even waste time. That's just what that is. Don't don't see people take it so close to heart. Like oh, like ew. Nobody said ew. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. You're healing some wounds right now. I have some deep <laughs> scars. I see. There are like a hundred friend zones in uh, my heart uh-huh. right now, and you are you're healing them. Listen, there's someone for everyone, and you can't force anything or or be with somebody just to feel sorry for them. Mm-hmm. No, be you know then who you hurting but yourself. And, and, and sometimes you got to be selfish. You know, you have to be selfish for your own happiness. So I'm still amazing. I just wasn't amazing, amazing for, for that them. person. Uh, yeah. You can be a good person and not be good for somebody. Uh-huh. And not everybody you're attracted to is going to be attracted to you. That's just not exactly. how it works. Mm-hmm. And it hurts your ego, but that's your ego and that's not them. It's not on them. I just feel like one day Ellen will be attracted to me. <laughs> I just feel it, man. And one you know day, what? I would get out of this. I support it. I support Ellen. I'm going to get out of this zone. I support <laughs> Ellen being attracted to you. Listen, um, Ellen, she's a G. Let's, let's, let's get into our topic, which is um, our topic's actually very interesting. You brought up future a little earlier. And, mm-hmm. and our topic is about. I, mean, I kind of brought up future. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. You get the credit for bringing up future. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm, the con- <laughs> but in this context, future is not a good person to bring up because mm-hmm. the concept is <laughs> uh, with, with flying girls out and treating them, especially uh, for celebrities, is nothing new. Mm-hmm. Celebrities will fly a girl out and treat them and ball and, and they talk about it in songs and stuff. Uh, however, recently, Future, Colin Kaepernick, and other celebrities have been called out on flying girls out, treating them, and then when the girl gets put into a quote-unquote friend zone where the girl doesn't want to do anything, they send them right back. Mm-hmm. Like they're, I don't know if they're specifically mean about it, but I do know that all of a sudden it's over. Like They're just like, well, then you need to not be here. Mm. Uh, and a lot of people are upset about it, and a lot of people actually understand it. I want to know what you think, and, and has it ever been a situation where like, uh, someone's ever t- treated you and, and you put on friendship and they took it that way. Mm-hmm. And where is the line between flattery and usury? So is it on Ooh. the girls or is it on the guys? Who's wrong, right, in this situation in particular? You know, it's that is such a tricky topic because you got to understand, chivalry is dead. Men don't court women anymore. They feel like... 
just because I buy your ticket or even buy you a drink. Forget even take a trip. Just because I buy you a drink, then, oh, you owe me something. Or, you know, I invite you out to dinner. The next step is, you know, let's, you know, have coffee in your house or something. They, they forget that in order for a woman to want you in other ways, you have to court them. Hmm. Courting them could even be taking trips. You can't expect a woman to want to sleep with you just because you flew them somewhere. And a lot of times they get it so easy to where they think that's the norm now. Like, wow. like because I'm flying you here, I'm doing this for you, you owe me now. Which that's not the case. Like, that's messed up. So, so I have a question about that because I like to keep things chivalrous, traditional. Mm -hmm. Treat a woman out, you know, when we go out to dinner and stuff. Recently I was on a date and the woman said, what, you think I can't pay for myself? Mm. So how do we know... How much to court? Mm -hmm. Greg, Greg was on a date. Greg, was, yeah, Greg, 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 Greg was on a Greg date. Greg was on the date. It wasn't me. He yeah. told me about Greg this. was on. A date. Mm. So. You know, it's 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 the way of the world now, where independent woman mm. thing is going on, where yeah. people want to show that they got it and they can do this and they don't need a man. But truth be told, you do. Every woman wants to be treated. Every woman wants to be catered to. You know, not to say all the time, but if you're going on a date. It is normal for a man to take care of the bill for their, you know, their date. Why can't you still just be friends and fly out a friend? Like, you don't have just friends that you want to take on trips? You know, you can go out to the, no. the club. Um, he's, <laughs> no, clearly. No, 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 flying out is a bit excessive to be like, oh, I flew out a friend. Now, mm -hmm. I will say this, that when you said chivalry's dead, chivalry is not dead. You just need to look for it. Right. And it exists. And, and more men need to be chivalrous. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, is, there's a difference between going to dinner and flying someone out. Well, these people clearly don't don't have an in between mode. They'll meet somebody the night before and they're flying sure. somewhere and they're because like, you want to come. Allows it. Right. And, and so and, and, and a lot of these a lot of guys in general expect a lot when they pay for stuff, which mm -hmm. is which is actually a horrible way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. With flying out. Now, this is a special case about flying out and being, like, took to the mall and buying a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you know his intent and you use it still, mm -hmm. and then after... Still don't do nothing. And no, no, not even... But then after go, oh, but I don't like you like that. See, that's where... Should have brought that up before, before. And had he decided... But how about this? Then why didn't he also bring it up? Hey, I like you and I want to take this further before assuming anything. Everything right. is an agreement. Hmm. So even with, if you know you're, you're taking a trip and, and he's going to take you shopping, this and the third, you got to know if you really like the person to even go that far. Yeah. You it, know? Is it awkward to ask those questions off the top? Hey, I'm flying you out. My intention. Hey, I'm buying you dinner. <laughs> my intention is to take you on a date and be physical with you. Because we're not flying anyone. Look. <laughs> well, I will say this: Where most of those guys yeah. aren't really looking for a relationship, so they got to be real. Like, listen, this we, we, you know, this is what I really I'm looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and let the girl have that opportunity. And with the way the world is now, honesty is the best thing, because yeah. you see these guys in these powerful positions getting caught up, and girls are calling rape and this that right. because the thing the night didn't go the way way it's planned and i'm not saying it's not rape or not but sometimes it can be a little extra to where it made them feel uncomfortable and now they're crying rape yeah. but it's sometimes the allure or magic of the relationship mm -hmm. lost when in fact we're confronting these things so early on. Is it off-putting to the woman to say, hey, here's my Well, listen, if a woman can say, hey, I want mm -hmm. you to go buy me this, that, the third, that's forward too. You know right. what I'm saying? If you if it, you can be forward, so can he. You right. know, I, I feel like it, it can be either or. It all depends on how fast you're going on the thing. See, when you're skipping steps, when you're seeing someone new, mm -hmm. and before even going on a local date, you want to fly them out, then you're skipping those steps. So you're going to have to have those conversations. Right. So, so that's real. That I have to agree there because mm -hmm. that's how things get confused later on. Yeah. And we heard the phrase "nip it from the bud." Nip and it that's, from the bud. And that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, as two people go into this, right? Where does it? Where does the line cross between someone treating someone out or mm -hmm. treating them? And then that person using them. You know, what is the line there? The line is if you know for sure you don't really like this person and you're, you're just taking them for granted, mm -hmm. that's where it is, you know? It, you know, okay, 
I don't really like you. And he offers to take you shopping. Be like, mm, no, you know, let's just do dinners and ha- you stop it. Right. But if you're leading the person on, you damn well know I ain't doing nothing. That's when you're wrong. But are you wrong if you just want to be that dude's friend and you want to get all the nice treats? You, you're going to have to expect him to want something, too. Well, especially if he's put it out there. Yeah. So, so what happens is a lot of times the guys explain, like, oh, you know, I'm into you. I'm doing this. And then some, some girls utilize it. And I'm not talking about things like dinner and mm-hmm. coffee. I'm talking Take about shopping, when it's trips. excessive. Yeah. And yeah. then at the end they'll be like, and, and remember, if uh, no means no. Like, no matter what point, of right. course, you mm-hmm. have that right. Mm-hmm. But you know that you went too far. Mm-hmm. It's intent. It's mm-hmm. what your intent is. So you got me paranoid now because now I don't know what gifts to receive from strangers. I want my coat back. Uh. <laughs> I want my coat back. I need, I, I, but I well, love this coat. Yeah. but here's the thing, right? Like I said, if you put put everything out there on the table, listen, I really like you. I want, I see us going here, or I want to get to know you better. You know, I like you on a personal level. Then at least. It's known. And she or he has the right to say, you know, I think we should just be friends and have fun. Right. Or I think we should do this. I'm not looking for a relationship, but, hey, we can see each other from time to time. Just lay out the laws. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, for me, like, if, if I'm looking for something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. If I'm just having fun, I'm going to tell you. Because hmm. if not, then you're playing with people's feelings. And, mm-hmm. and as... Look, first of all, a lot of things you said were communication, mm-hmm. being upfront and honest, which a lot of people... Especially guys are not. Let's not act like oh everything is girls' fault at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Most guys, we're not. You're not upfront and honest. You're not telling telling these girls where you are. You playing that friend card, and then you're getting mad when they want to be friends. Like mm-hmm. that's that's not that's not fair. And it's not even it's manipulative to be mm-hmm. honest. And second of all, uh, the second thing is when it comes to the line of usury. Mm-hmm. Intent, like you as a person, if you know what you're doing is wrong, it's probably because it's wrong. Right. If you know what you're doing is wrong, it's because you're wrong. And we really appreciate your words of wisdom in this situation. Thank like you. she dropped, down. she dropped a lot more bars than I ever had. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of bars. It's a yeah, lot of bars. bars. We really appreciate you for doing that. Uh, each week, we per- pick an imperfect gentleman of the week who is someone who embodies the. Uh, Characteristic traits of imperfect gentlemen. Someone's trying to be better. This week we have two. Uh, first of is is Jay Z, mm-hmm. rap icon, husband to Beyonce. <laughs> That's like a real resume builder. Yo, it's a resume builder. That is uh, <laughs> celebrating his 49th birthday. And Tiffany Haddish also celebra- celebrating a birthday coming off right now. Happy so birthday, happy birthday, Tiffany. sis. Happy birthday, uh, we Jay. love you. Thank you so much for being who you are and, and inspiring us to be who we are. We appreciate it. Uh, and thank you so much, Sharice, for being on on the show today. I know you. you're going to make a lot of arrangements, accommodations to be here. And I mean, I, I like it was so important. I'm on my deathbed. And I'm like, yo, I got to make it. Man, yeah. I appreciate that, too. And I'm a woman of my word. Yo, you yeah. know, so I said, you know, I'm going to stay an extra day. I promise you I was coming. Yo. Through, Came so. through. Appreciate she got a meeting so after this and catching the flight. After yeah, this I know. Show. She's she's always <laughs> busy. Where can people find you? If you want to be found. Um, Sharice Mills, C-H-A-R-I-S-S-E-M-I-L-L-S on social media, YouTube, you name it. And what's your next project coming out? I'm going to be dropping a song called Can't Trust Myself. The video is coming out in January. I wish I could be in this video. (laughs) That's what's up. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Everybody, make sure to go follow her uh, and live vicariously through her because she's always download my latest single right now. It's called Champion. That's what. Yeah, and it's it's fire. We can find it on Spotify. That's what I use. Dope. Everywhere. It's on everything. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we are imperfect gentlemen, but I really appreciate you because we do need this quest and we need more women like you to help guide us. Uh, I am Teron Von Gosry, literally at I am Teron all across the board. I'm alongside Mr. George Corey. Find me there. Teron, spell the last name. For That's K H O U R I. And we are imperfect, imperfect gentlemen. gentlemen. Remember, nobody's perfect <laughs> but, but us. us. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.